are changing lives, building dreams, creating prosperity, saving souls one at a time. We are the Vine and Branch World Ministry. and sisters, Christians, and friends. It is indeed a great honor for me to come before you once and again to teach another Bible study lesson in God's classroom of how you're learning. For we are truly blessed to be in this classroom this morning to bring to you another word of truth from God's holy book as we learn the truth through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us and dwells in this book. We thank God for each one of you. We thank God for allowing us to come into your hearts and into your homes and be a part of this great Bible study on another day. And I say to you once more and again, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, church. God is truly good this morning. He woke us up in our right mind and he started us on the our way. So today we're going to be continuing teaching our lesson on renewing your mind, which we have been on for the last several weeks. And I know that many of you have come before our teachers and leaders with further questions, which is very good. We appreciate you. We know that these lessons are very important to you. So continue to send your questions, your emails and your texts, and the formulation of your small classes with our leaders of this convention. We know that we have many visitors in the audience today, and many of you have not been privileged to the number of teachings that we have dealt with over the last few weeks, but you can get the videos from our Bible study store. You can also order them online. And you can go to our uh, video channel and watch them on Davis the Teacher YouTube video channel. So we thank all of you. And we praise God for you. So in this lesson today, as we continue on renewing your mind, the Lord has given us a, another very powerful lesson. The subject matter for this lesson today will be walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. For those of you who have your Bibles this morning, just open them up to the book of Galatians. And today we're going to begin this very important teaching from Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. And in this lesson today, Paul turned to the personal and spiritual lives of the Galatians. 
And Paul was warning them about following uh, their own desires and their own wishes. And Paul said to them these words. He said, slavery was a threat from the outside influences of false teachers. But it was an equal threat from the inside desires of their own sinful nature. And in this lesson today, Paul wanted the Galatian people to walk in the spirit, to get away from their own selfish desires. And he wanted to replace their selfish indulgence with loving services to others by learning how to walk in the spirit. And this is what God wants us to do today. And Paul was teaching them this lesson by telling them that they must renew their minds. And we say to the unsaved world that you must be born again. And we say to our Christian brothers and sisters and the born again Christians that you must renew your mind. And this is something that, that you must learn to do daily. Renew your minds. God wants us to walk in the spirit. And this is a very profound lesson that Paul was trying to get across to the Galatian people. So in your Bibles, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, let us read this together. Let us read this together. Okay, read. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? What does it mean to walk in the spirit? Well, Walking in the spirit is a mindset that lines up with the will of God. It is a mindset. Write that down in your notes, the word mindset. It is a mindset that lines up with the word of God. And whatever you set your mind on, this is what you're going to do. Whatever you set your mind on, it, you are going to do those things. Also, when you are walking in the flesh, it is also a mindset that does not line up with the word of God. So what you want to be able to do is to think 
on the things that you are allowed to enter into your mind. Think on the things that you allow to enter into your mind. The Bible tells us to set our minds on the things above, the things that are in heaven, and not on the things of this world. So if we are setting our minds on the things above, our minds are going to line up with the thoughts of God. Because God's thoughts are not our thoughts. You see, when we were born again, we put away the old man and we took on the new man. So therefore, we took on the new creature, which is in God, which allows our thoughts to line up with the thoughts of God. Now, what is Paul saying about fulfilling the lust of the flesh. When he talks about, when he says here in this scripture, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Paul in this lesson is, is telling us that by walking in the spirit, we will begin to be doing things the way that God wants them done. Our spirit, our, our minds at that point is going to line up with the mind of God. And walking in the spirit, we won't have those strong cravings of sexual desires outside of marriage, nor the desires to use drugs and all sorts of other illegal activities. Because when these desires and come upon us, the lust of the flesh, a lot of us have the tendency to give in to these to these desires, the desires of fulfilling the lusts of the flesh. So when you go ahead and, and do this, it puts you outside of the will of God. And this is a place that you really never want to be. You want to always remain on the inside of God's will. Now let's look at what the Amplified Bible says about this here, uh, down here in, uh, in, in verse five, uh, Galatians 5, uh, verse 16. Here's how the, the Amplified Bible reads. It says, but I say, walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Seek him and be responsive to his guidance. Walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Now, this word habitually simply means habit, forming a habit. For example, a person that smokes cigarettes smoke dope or have become addicted to cocaine or have become addicted to eating food, 
getting obese. These are habits that people form and become addicted to these habits. So the same thing in walking in the spirit can become a habit. You want to develop this habit because it is a good habit. And in order to do so, you must pick up this Bible. You must read it and study it daily. You must meditate on it day and night because the Bible teaches us that this is what we must do. And in order for us to renew our minds, we have to pick up this book. We have to read it, study it, meditate on it, day and night. This is part of what forming that habit is all about. And you can only form that habit by studying the word of God. And this is what it's saying here in this in the scripture. Now, it further says that you must be responsive to its guidance. Let's use for an example. You're in your automobile and you're driving along the highway. You're looking for a certain building or a certain street somewhere. And just before you get there, a voice says to you, turn at the, turn right at the next intersection. But when you get to that intersection, you say to yourself, no, this is not the right street, and you keep on going. Well, what have you done? You did not listen to the voice that spoke to you. That was the voice of the Holy Spirit telling you to turn right at the next section. You see, the word of God is truth. And it can only be found here in this book. And when you are studying this word daily, you are renewing your mind. And when you're renewing your mind, you're going to become responsive to the teachings of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, when you come to that intersection and that voice is spoken to you that says, turn right at the next intersection, you're going to obey. But if you're not renewing your mind daily and you're not in this word, when you get to that next intersection, you're going to hear the voice of the devil speaking to you and telling you, no, this is not right. Keep going. See, at that point, you are walking in the flesh. God's spirit spoke and says, turn right at the next intersection. You disobeyed it. So at that point, you were not responsive to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You were responsible to the devil and the lusts of the flesh. So you passed by your street. So now you got to go and figure out how to get back around to where you will go, supposed to be going. So my brothers and sisters, it further says here, it says, and then when you are responsive, when you're responsive to it and you follow its guidance, it says, then you will certainly not carry out the desires of the sinful nature, which responds impulsively without regard for God and his precepts. 
You see, God is teaching you, but you disobeying the teaching and you just going on down the road and this is normally what happens. Now, let's, let's turn over here in the Bibles for a moment to Galatians 5 and 25. Galatians 5 and we're going to look down here at verse 25. You there? Okay. Now, Galatians 5 and 25, this is what the Bible says. It says, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. If we live by the Spirit, if we say that this is our life, this is the way that we're going to live, then we're going to walk in the spirit. We're going to take every step that the spirit commands us to do. We're going to follow the guidance and leadership of the spirit. If the spirit is leading us uh, this way, we're going to follow that spirit because the Holy Spirit is only going to lead us one way and that is in the right way. You see, when we're walking in the spirit, our mindset is on the things of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit was sent to teach us, to guide us, to lead us, and to protect us in all situations. So if we're doing, as the verse 16 says, being responsible, responsive to the Holy Spirit, and to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we can only go one way. We're going to be walking in the path of righteousness. Let me use for an example. When I was a young boy, growing up in the South, uh, I lived on a farm, and every morning during this farming season, my dad will get up and go out to the fields and get ready to plow the fields. And I also would get up with him because I wanted to follow the lead and guidance of my dad. So we would go out to the barn and we would hook up the old mule and the old horse and, and then we'd go out to the field and begin to plow. Well, as a young kid, eight, nine years old, I just wanted to be with my dad and just follow him. So when my dad was start plowing a row, I would be walking behind him and the plow and the old mule, and I would be trying to step, every step my dad will take in his footsteps. So what was I doing? I was following the lead and the guidance of my dad. I was walking in my dad's footstep, doing everything that he was doing, except that I was doing it in my mind because I had a mindset to follow in my dad's footsteps. Well, you see, this is what the Bible is telling us here. When it says, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us walk in the Spirit. And when we're walking in the Spirit, this is what is going to happen. When we're walking and following the leads, lead of the Spirit, it is going to provide us with personal integrity. It's going to provide us with personal integrity. It's going to provide us with a godly character. Because remember what the Bible taught us from the very beginning when in Genesis verse 1 and uh, 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 chapter 1 and verse 26 and 27, it says that, that God spoke uh, to, the, to 
uh, 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 to this Holy Spirit, and uh, and and he said, he said, let us, uh, let us make man in our own image and likeness and 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 character. Well, you see, when God created us, then He was talking to the Holy, uh, 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 to the Triumph. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he said, let us make man in our own image and character. So, 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 so here he says that, that we're going to have a personal, personal integrity, a godly character, and we're going to have moral courage. Uh, our conduct will be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Because when Jesus uh, uh, left, was raised from the dead, and, and then he went back, uh, into heaven to 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 be with the Father. Uh, uh, he said to the disciples, and he said to us as he was speaking to the disciples. He said, "I will send you uh, a Comforter. I will send you a Helper. I will send you that help in order to help you uh, overcome uh, uh, all of the trials and tribulations that you are going to face in this life." providing uh, you renew your mind and then you walk uh, uh, daily uh, in the Holy Spirit. He's going to send the Holy Spirit uh, uh, to be with you. He's going to send the Holy Spirit uh, uh, to teach you and to guide you and to help you overcome the evil things of this world. Now, here's what I want to show you. Uh, that as a Christian, You're going to be like two trees as a Christian. When you look outside in, uh, in an apple orchard or, or perhaps even outside uh, in your own backyard or front yard, you see two trees. At some point, one of the trees has begun to die off, and then the other tree uh, is full of blooms, uh, greenery, and lush. So you got two trees sitting side by side. One's dead, and then the other is flowering. Well, you see, as long as you live in this earth, you as an individual, you are going to be as these two trees. You see, when you were born again, when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you died to the old man. So the old man is the tree that is not flowering. It is the one that seems dead. And you were reborn in the spirit of Jesus Christ. This is the tree that is blooming with lush greenery and it is producing or ready to produce good fruit. Here's where we stand. Let's look or turn our Bibles to verse 17 here in Galatians 5. So look down here at verse 17 and try to understand this from what the scripture is talking about in terms of these two trees. You see, where we are right now is the Christian living and walking in the spirit. There is going to be a conflict because the old man is fighting with the new man. And the old man, which is the fleshly man, wants to come back in and take control. So there's a conflict there. And there's always going to be a conflict as long as we live here in this earth. The problem is only going to be solved when we learn to walk in the Spirit, renew our minds daily. 
pick up the Bible and study it and renew our mind. So let's now look here at uh, verse 17 and get a greater understanding of what uh, the scripture is teaching us here. For, for here is what it says in verse 17. It says, for the sinful nature has its desires, which is opposed to the spirit. That is the old tree, the old man. And the desires of the spirit opposes the sinful nature of these two, the sinful nature and the spirit, are in direct opposition to each other, continually in conflict. So that you as a believer, you as a believer, do not, you as a believer, do not always do whatever good things you want to do. You see, by the old nature being in conflict with the new nature, the old man being in conflict with the new man, you're not always going to do what you want to do. That's why it's so important that you study the Word of God. Be obedient to the Word of God. Follow the Holy Spirit's lead as He leads you in the path of righteousness. So now how do we overcome this conflict? All right, let's go over to the book of Romans. And we want to look uh, here at chapter 8. Let's look here at book of Romans chapter 8 and uh, verses uh, begin with begin at verses 5, 6, and 7. Romans chapter 8. Okay, here's what the Bible says to us. It says, For those who live accordingly to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Verse 6 for to set the mind on the flesh is death. For to set the mind on the flesh is death. Now, the Bible is not necessarily speaking of the physical death or the no life being in this body. But what he is speaking of is the separation of, from God, the separation from God. In, in other words, you're going to be separated from the provisions of God. And by being separated from the provisions of God, the Bible is saying that for to set your mind on the flesh is death but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For God sent his only begotten son into the world that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life and have peace in that eternal life. And in verse seven, it says, for the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And finally, verse 8 says, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. For those who are not in the flesh cannot please God. So why do we want to continue to live in the flesh when we can live in the spirit, when we can walk daily in the spirit by setting our minds 
on the spirit. As we said from the beginning, uh, uh, walking in the spirit is a mindset uh, that lines up with the word of God. Walking in the flesh is also a mindset that lines up against, against the word of God. So how do we get uh, uh, to that higher state, uh, that higher order, uh, in order to please God? How do we lift our minds from this lower realm where we are in this earth, being in conflict with the old man because we have accepted Jesus and been reborn again. And now we want to be able to have a mindset of being in the higher realm where God has chosen for us to be. So let's do it this way. Let's turn our Bibles once again to the book of Romans. Uh, we're there in the book of Romans. Let's, let's go back over here to uh, to chapter 12, uh, to chapter 12 in the book of Romans. And let's look down here at, um, at verse 2. Chapter 12, verse 2. And I'm reading from the Amplified Bible on this. And it says this. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with his superficial values and customs, but be transformed and be transformed and purposely change. Be transformed and purposely changed. Listen to that. Listen to that again. And do not be conformed to this world. Do not set your mind on the things of this world. Do not set your mind on the things of this world any longer. In other words, the Bible is telling us that up until this point, our minds have been controlled by the ways of the world and the way that the world has set out to do things. We're following the, the world's way uh, of living. But now he's telling us that we must move our minds into a higher realm uh, of life. Get away from the old way. Get out of that conflict. You have been born again. You are a child of God. Uh, you are a child of the King. And now it's time to lift your thoughts into a higher realm and begin to do the things that the higher realm of life is going to bring to you. You, in order to get that, you have to pick up this book and you have to study it. You have to gain the knowledge that this Bible is going to give to you by being in the higher realm of life. It says further, it says, it says, progressively changed as you mature. You see, when you uh, are, are maturing, when, you, when you're growing up uh, uh, in Christ, you're becoming a, a new creature. You're putting away the old things, the old way uh, uh, of living. You are now becoming a mature Christian. You have been born again, and you've accepted the ways of the kingdom. So, so you're becoming a, 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 a brand new creature. creature. You're becoming spiritually uh, 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 and accepting a, a, as a mature spirituality, a mature spiritual Christian uh, uh, by the renewing, listen to that, that the word there is by renewing of your mind. In other words, it says following on godly values and 
and and ethical uh, uh, attitudes. Uh, so you 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 you're putting away all of those old ways, and and, and no longer are you uh, going outside of God's law uh, into man's law and into man's way. You are walking in the spirit. So 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 you're getting up, taking on uh, uh, the ethical values, so that uh, so that you may prove for yourself. Uh, uh, what the will of God is, what God's will is uh, for your life. You walk in, in the spirit by renewing your mind now, uh, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plans and purposes for your life. My God, that is awesome. And in terms of the change that uh, is going to take place in our lives as we make a change through renewing of our minds. Now, let's see what the use of the Bible tells us about being uh, conformed to this world. Let's see if, what else can we learn as we dig deeper into, into the scriptures because this is what is so important, my brothers and sisters. When you begin to study the word, you learn so much and it gives you so much power to be able to live in the spirit, walk in the spirit, talk in the spirit, you begin to have new hands and new feet, and you can begin to lift yourself up on the wings of an eagle because now God is picking you up and you begin to feel like you're floating through the sky because once again, you have so much knowledge and power to do greater things because this is what the divine spirit does for you. It fills you with the Holy Ghost. It allows you to be able to make that change. And now the conflict between those two trees, you're no longer there. This is what the Spirit does for you. This is what's picking up this Bible and studying it day in and day out. Because this is what you want to be able to do. You want to feel good. And in order to feel good, you got to be able to know the truth of the Word of God. So let's look over here in 1 John 2 and 15. Let's look at 1 John 2 and 15, and let's see, and let's see, see what else does the word says here. Look at it now. Come on now. Come on with me now. It says, do not love the world. Now, isn't that what Paul spoke about in Romans 12 and 2? It says, do not conform yourself to the world. Do not love the ways of the world. Do not love the things of the world. Set your sights higher. Set your sights on the things above and not the things below. Do not love the world. Now, see, this is what, what John is now tell, telling us. He's teaching us the same identical thing that Paul was teaching us over there in Romans. He says, do not love the world. Do not love the world of sin, of sin and being in the flesh uh, the design, the lust of the flesh. Get away from those from those sinful things, that old man of yours, that old sinful nature of yours. Do not love the sins of, that opposes God because you see when, when, when you have a mindset of, of walking in the flesh, that is a, a opposed direct of God's ways, of God's law. God wants you to walk in the path of righteousness, not in the path of sin. So the Bible is saying to us here, it's saying to us here, it says that, that opposes uh, the God and his precepts, nor the things uh, that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not even in him. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not even in you. So why do you want to love the things of the world? Get away from the ways of the world. Look at verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lusts and the sensual uh, cravings of the flesh and the lusts and longings of the eyes and the boastful pride of the pretentious 
confidence in one's resources, the monies that 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 you have in the bank and 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 and, and the big fine house and and then all of the cars and all of the clothes. Uh, 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 you set your sights on these things. These are the, the, the things of the world. Uh, uh, you see, your resources. And so God is saying to you, says, get away from these things or, 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 or the, the stability of, of, uh, of the earthly things. God wants you to move away from them. Now look down there in verse 17. It says, the world is passing away and with it, it's lust, the lust that's in the world. It's it's, it's not passing away. It's not go, no longer gonna, gonna 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 be here. Why? Because you are moving out and you are moving on. You setting your sights now on the things above and not the things below. You're lifting up your mind to higher knowledge, the godly way. Setting your sights higher and not on the shameful pursuits and ungodly longings, but the one who does the will of God and carries out his purposes live forever. You see, when you are in the will of God, carrying out his will and purpose, God is giving you eternity. You're no longer going to be pursuing all of these negative things that are down here in this earth, uh, 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 being unhappy, uh, uh, fighting, cursing, drinking, and smoking, and doing all of the negative things that all of your friends want to do. You're going to be lifted up on the wings of an eagle. You're going to be able now to fly because your sights are set higher than the sights of this world. And we're getting ready to bring this lesson to a close. Now, as we do so, let's turn down here to uh, Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. And let's look down here in chapter 5 in the, um, in the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 5. Look at verse 8. And let's see what it says here. It says, for once you were darkness, once you were living in darkness, once you were a person of the world, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Live as those who are native born to the light. Living in the light of Jesus Christ. Let your little light shine so that the world can now see the newness that is in you. The world begins to see Christ that is living in you. And of course, Satan and his band of angels are going to oppose you in every step. Therefore, you have to remove yourself from their ways and the ways of the world. You have to get away from the baby crowd and you have to begin to walk in the newness of Christ. But of course, you know, the baby crowd and the Ray Ray crowd, uh, they don't want to walk in the newness. They want you to come back and sit down with them and, 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 and puff off and drink off and, and do all of the illegal things of the world that you were once doing, uh, now they're hating on you because you no longer are, are a part of their a part of their group, a part of their class. And the final scripture I want you to uh, uh, to take upon today is uh, let's go over here to the um, uh, to the book of Corinth. So we want to look at uh, the second Corinthians uh, second Corinthians. Uh, let's look at uh, chapter 5 and down here at verse 7. And let's see what it says here right quickly. It says, for we walk by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight, living as our lives in a manner consistent with our confidence, belief, 
and God's promises. Remember, God never makes a promise that he does not keep. God never makes a promise that he does not keep. You want to live, learn, and obey the word of God. Because if God said it, God will do it. My brothers and sisters, that is our Bible teaching for this day. May you walk, may you walk steadfastly in the Holy Spirit. Move out of the flesh as you are born again. Lift up your holy hands and thank God. For God is worthy of the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen.